In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set up a template for testing hypothesized values of the population mean. Um, this, in particular, we're looking at cases when the z-distribution is used. In order to use a standard normal distribution, to begin with, you need a normally distributed sample mean. This happens in situations where the central limit theorem applies, and the central limit theorem will apply when you have a large sample size, uh, typically when the sample size is greater than or equal to 30, or in such circumstances when you know that the population is normally distributed. Um, so that's the circumstances when this template will be useful. More specifically, we are looking at cases when the population standard deviation is treated as known. So these are special cases. Uh, typically, these will come up in a course where you're just beginning to learn about uh, testing the population mean. Um, also, uh, another application would be quality control applications where the standard deviation of the process is well known and you're testing to see if the equipment or the process is operating within the parameters that, is, uh, that it's supposed to operate within. Anyway, so we are using population standard deviation and we're operating under the central limit theorem, which requires, once again, either a large sample size greater than equal to 30 or a normally distributed population. So let's set up a scenario here and then we'll work through the calculations that we want the template to do for us. Uh, so in this scenario, we're looking at a sample of one hundred observations. The sample average is 19. And the population standard deviation is 6. So we have to specify an alpha and alpha essentially defines how sure you want to be or how confident you want to be in your results. If you want to be 95 percent confident then you would use an alpha of 0.05. Uh, it's also known as the level of significance of the test. Um, we will need to specify a hypothesized mean. In this case, we'll we will use 21. And so the types of questions that we want to be able to address here are with a sample of 100 observations that was taken randomly that leads to a sample average of 19, in circumstances where we know the population standard deviation is 6, can we disprove, for instance, that 21 is a viable possibility for the population mean? Uh, we're going to need a few calculations in order to answer this question. The first calculation that we're going to do is we're going to find the standard error of the sample mean, which will equal the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. There are a couple different ways to find the square root. Uh, you can use a square root function. I prefer to raise to the power of 0.5. So in this circumstance we have a standard error of x bar or the sample mean that is equal to 0.6. To find our z-test we need to standardize our normally distributed sample average. In order to do that, we will begin by taking x bar and shifting it to the left by the population mean. In this case, that is a hypothesized population mean. And then we're going to rescale it by its own standard error. So x bar minus our hypothesized mean divided by the standard error of the sample mean. And that will give us a z-test equal to negative 3.33 repeating. So in order to know whether this outcome is extreme enough to come to a conclusion, we'll need to develop some critical values. Uh, the critical values will all be driven by alpha. In other words, how confident we want to be in our outcome. So we're going to go from this probability to a z-value and in Excel we do that using an inverse function. So typing equals norm, we see a lot of options come up. We're going to use norm.s for standard, standard normal, and inverse meaning we're going from a probability to a z-value. 
and once I hit tab it wants the probability so this function will return the Z value for which 5% of the outcomes fall to its left and that is negative 1.645 it's a pretty common Z value so if we're using a left-tailed test uh, then any outcome for Z test that is less than or more extreme than in the same direction so less than negative 1.645 will, will result in us rejecting the null and proving in this case that the population mean must be less than 21. Now for a right tail we need to find the value such that only 5% of the observations fall to the right of this particular Z value and because the Z distribution is symmetric around zero that simply equals negative one times the above so 5% of outcomes fall below a Z value of negative 1.645 and 5% of outcomes fall to the right of 1.645. For a two-tailed test we split the rejection region between extreme outcomes on the left hand side and extreme outcomes on the right hand side so to find z alpha over 2 we'll use the same function norm.s.inverse only this time instead of looking up alpha we will look up alpha over 2 and we get the famous outcome of negative 1.96 uh, we will rely on symmetry once again to find the positive z alpha over 2. So looking at our hypothesized mean and z critical we will be able to reject the idea that the, po the population mean can be greater than or equal to 21 and prove that the population mean must be less than 21 using a left tailed test. We can also reject the idea using a two tailed test that the population mean is equal to 21. We have proven with 95% confidence that the population mean is not equal to 21. Um, because our Z test is more extreme than our critical values for a two-tailed test. Um, and it's also more extreme and more negative than our Z critical value for the left-tailed test. Uh, an alternative way of looking at or coming to a conclusion based on the z-test is to look at the p-value. Um, the p-value correlates to alpha but it, it, it is the area related to z-test rather than z-crit. So if the area to the left of z-critical is 0 0.05 for a left tail test then what we're looking for is the area to the left of Z test for a left tail test. In order to find that we will use norm norm.s.dist which provides us with the area to the left of a Z score. We'll input Z and we'll indicate that we want the area to the left or the cumulative result and as we can see it kind of makes sense there's 5% of the outcomes will fall uh, to the left of negative 1.645 and only 0.0004 or 0.04% of the outcomes will fall to the left of negative 3.33 repeating. What does this mean? Well when we have a p-value that's less than alpha we'll go ahead and reject the hypotheses in that case. So just as the p-value is the area to the left of z-test when we have a left-tailed test, the p-value is the area to the right of z-test for a right-tailed test. So we just need to find the total area under the curve which is 1 and subtract from 1 the above and we can see that there is no way that we would reject a right-tailed test uh, with a negative z-test. It just wouldn't happen. Now to find the p-value for a two-tailed test we will need to begin by finding the minimum of the above 
and then multiplying that by 2, we will get the p-value for a two-tailed test. The reason we multiply by 2 for a two-tailed test is in a two-tailed test, the critical region is split between extremely high and extremely low values. And so what we've done here is to take the smaller of the two areas above and multiply it by 2. In other words, we're finding in this case the area to the left of negative 3.33 plus the area to the right of positive 3.333. Um, and that adds up to 0 0.009. So because both the left tail p-value and the two tail p-value are smaller than alpha 0 0.05, we know that we would reject the hypotheses associated with both of these. In other words, we would be able to prove that the population mean was less than 21, and we would be able to prove that the population mean was not equal to 21. So the last thing to see here is the clear form button, which will reset all of the input so that you can transition to another problem. If you would like to see how to add a clear form button, just click the link that is appearing now. Thanks for watching, and I hope that this helps.